In 2007 I posted my first handful of film analysis videos and one of them was called The Meaning of the Monolith Revealed, which of course was all about the famous rectangular slab in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. In that video I presented an interpretation of the monolith that had nothing to do with alien intelligences or God. The video reached over half a million views and I received hundreds of emails from viewers who said the interpretation had blown their minds. It was also popular enough that one academic, Dan LeBerg, published a paper attacking my work in general and explaining that he was annoyed with the influence my Meaning of the Monolith video was having over his film class students. But he offered no arguments against my monolith interpretation. Now for years I'd been wanting to do a condensed and updated version of the monolith video, but kept putting it off until a few months ago when I accidentally deleted the first section of the old version on YouTube. But the old version wasn't as nicely edited or as enthusiastically narrated as my more recent videos, so you're now watching the new version. Now there's so much information in support of my interpretation of the monolith that the longest version of this video, which is only available on my Kubrick Decoded DVD sets, is 47 minutes long. But for this version I'm just going to condense some of the most interesting evidence, and at the end of the video I'll answer the most frequent arguments I've heard against my monolith interpretation. So please wait until the end before posting questions or counter-arguments. Okay, so let's get on with it. As a primer before I state my interpretation, I'd like to draw to your attention several details regarding the production history of 2001. In the film we see no aliens, and there is no dialogue specifically describing aliens. This piece of dialogue is the closest we get. Eighteen months ago, the first evidence of intelligent life off the Earth was discovered. The briefing scene on the moon contains cryptically no references to aliens. They could be talking about anything. And humans flying around in space can also be considered intelligent life off the Earth. Our assumption that an unseen intelligence is guiding the story is based primarily on one thing, the monolith itself. In the executive screening of the film before its release, Kubrick had included a voiceover narration that explained the presence of an alien intelligence throughout the film. But after the investors and studio heads had watched it, he removed the voiceover narration for the general release. Kubrick then explained in interviews that the surface plotline of an alien intelligence contacting the human race and guiding its evolution was the film's, quote, simplest level. And when asked to elaborate on the more complex, deeper level, he would flat out refuse, or would make cop-out excuses not to talk about it at all, such as saying that it was all just down to what the viewer brings to the film. He also explained that although the film was very loosely inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's short story The Sentinel, the full novel 2001 Space Odyssey was written as the film was being shot, and was therefore loosely based on what film rushes Kubrick allowed Arthur C. Clarke to see. Kubrick was constantly making changes to the script and had the sole right to dictate what shape the novel took. Clark was just a writer for hire and had very little idea what Kubrick was really up to. The result is that the film and novel are extremely different, and this was also drawn attention to by Kubrick in interviews. Now regarding the monolith itself, the object was pyramid shaped in Clark's original short story. Kubrick changed this to an upright rectangular slab, and he experimented with projecting images onto the monolith's surface that would instruct the apes in their intellectual development. Incidentally, that feature is retained in the novel. But Kubrick also stated that he abandoned this feature of the monolith for the film version because he didn't want the monolith to just appear to be an advanced television teaching machine. Take note of that phrase. Now in the film itself, the transition to a surrealist ending via the Stargate Tunnel begins with a series of shots of Jupiter. The first shot is slightly tilted, so that Jupiter itself is slightly tilted. These tilts increase gradually until the final shot, in which Jupiter and its moons are viewed at a precise and symmetrical 90 degree angle. The shot then tilts upward 90 degrees to where we should see the Sun, but instead we enter the Stargate Tunnel. The monolith itself was always seen standing upright in previous scenes, but in the Jupiter shots it is seen floating about on its side. Nothing passes in front or behind it, and so we have no idea of its scale. Is it six feet long, or is it planet sized? In this shot it even threatens to align with the film screen itself. And in the final shot before the Stargate, it is tilted precisely 90 degrees on its side from its usual position, 
and it then tilts backwards 90 degrees and disappears. The camera itself then tilts backwards 90 degrees in parallel, thus triggering the Stargate transition. Also in parallel, the opening shot of the film showed an earth rise on the moon and then a sunrise. All depicted at a precise 90 degree angle. The sun rises like this above the equator, not the North Pole. The Stargate also begins with a vertically aligned tunnel that switches precisely 90 degrees midway through into a horizontal tunnel. And among its geometrical patterns is this series of fractal arrows tilting into each other at 90 degree increments. The point of all this emphasis on 90 degree angle transitions, none of which were in the 2001 novel, is that the meaning of the monolith is hidden by its orientation. We're supposed to view it in this position, not upright. And what does this shape correlate with? Getting warmer? Warmer again? Have you figured it out yet? Hot? Red hot? Bingo! The monolith represents the screen on which the viewer is watching the film. Basically, 2001 was funded as a space race propaganda film by NASA and IBM and other corporations, and Kubrick has used the cryptic upright presentation of the monolith to hide a simple clue which, when discovered, demolishes the artificial alien intelligence narrative. The film itself is the monolith, an advanced television teaching machine as Kubrick put it, and the apes and astronauts puzzling over the monolith represent us, the confused audience, who need only get up from our seats and touch the screen to confirm to ourselves that the space race propaganda narrative isn't real, it's an illusion, it's just a movie. <laughs> 